Hey guys, it's Dr. Greer. We've got another edition of Carpools and Cannulas tonight with Dr. Kat Gallis from Restore Plastic Surgery in San Diego. Ella is joining us today. Hi. Um, yeah. And let me see when Dr. Gallis pops on. There she is. I'll see if I can pull her on here. And if you hear frozen in the background, it's because we're watching episode two right now. So, you know, that'll be awesome. Hi. Hey. hey. How are you? I'm good. I just raced in. I just realized that my AirPods are dead. So there we go. Hey, we have two kids. Hey, here's Ella. <laughs> she was making slime. Oh, not. You like making slime, don't you? We could do an episode on that. <laughs> there we go. Let's bring your daughter to IG Live Day. <laughs> That's right. How to make the ingredients. Yeah. I know there's borax, glue, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can make it different colors and sparkles and scent it. Well, that sounds delightful. I mostly just pick it out of the carpet. Yep. That's my favorite. My nephew, in fact, actually, um, my sister just joined, uh, was over at my house. They were making slime. Yeah, remember you guys made slime? And um, did this? No, he was over here. I'm getting edited on my story. Did this with the slime, put it in his hair. While they were Googling how to get it out, uh, he decided to take matter in his own hands and did one of these. So we had baby bangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I one time like stretch this really big bubble and put it over her head. <gasps> and it so. worked out okay? That was Wyatt. Was that Wyatt? Yeah. Oh. Okay. He used to do it all the time. Well, it was one of you kids. I do remember picking it out of hair for a while. Ugh. Good times. Time he put it in his hair and me and Laura, we were getting stuff to like, <laughs> She's get it telling out. the story. And, and then, then he went upstairs and I was like, Ryan! And then he came down, he's like, I cut my hair. <laughs> Took it into his own hands. So anyway, behind the hair are ears, which I think is what we're going to talk about, right? Yes. Oh, so I do you want to my new necklace, though, first. Recognize it? Oh, nice. That's beautiful. I have mine. I need to put it on. I'm going to wear it to the retreat. It. Mine just came last week, so I'm excited. I'll wear it to the retreat next week, too. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, okay, so I know you were talking about putting product in your ears, right? For the whole yeah. Here, oh, I'm turning frozen down since my AirPods aren't working. Um, yeah, I put filler in them a couple weeks ago, and I love it because my earrings actually have support. Like my ear holes aren't stretched, but my lobes lost volume, so my earrings just look saggy. Mm -hmm. I know some people do get like a crease right here, and that will help yeah. with that as well. Um, so you feel like it just offers more support to your ear. How much um, vo volume are you adding in there? Like 0.1? I something? added, it was like 0.5 between the two. And honestly, I left my studs in so I could see when it was. Oh, enough? Okay. Yeah. So that worked. So like maybe half a syringe. And you used which yep. product? Well, I like Restylane because it comes in a half CC. Ella, mm -hmm. It comes in a half ml, which is mm -hmm. perfect for that. I used RHA too because I had a sample syringe mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So just straight rusty and a half cc. Yep. Yeah, I think Vobella comes in half <coughs> cc too, but I don't know. that's pretty. Yeah. <coughs> Might not hold up as well. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, that's a nice little trick. I do earlobe repairs, which I'm sure you do. Um, of them, and it's always people always call. <coughs> Like right away when they've torn the earlobe, like the next day, yeah. should you go to the ER? No, the ER is going to send you home. It's not really an emergency. Just let it heal and then we'll fix it. Yep. I do see them. Yeah. So I've seen either the rip through, <coughs> the complete cleft, or I have older ladies where they've been wearing um, heavy, heavy earrings. earrings their whole life. And so now the hole is just stretched out. Yeah, and yeah. Earring we have to take off. yeah. Either way, those are both repaired very similarly. And, you know, excise the defect and close. <laughs> close up. Yep. Do you do mm -hmm. um, the stretched earlobes at all? The gauge ones? I do. Those are not as easy. <laughs> no, they're a little more tricky, but they're very satisfying. Yes. 
So I've done those. Um, those are those plugs where people put the spacers in their ears for, I don't know, people who don't live in Southern California or else <laughs> they are very popular here. Um, and it stretches out your earlobe, but if you decide to stop take wearing them, then you still have this big gaping hole in your earlobe. Yeah. Yep. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. I try to do it so that the incision is on the inside, like towards the inside of the ear instead of on the outside. But it either way, it heals really well. And it does. So the thing about doing all of those procedures, how long do you tell people before they can re-pierce their ears? I will re-pierce it six weeks. Okay. And then do you pierce in office? For I do. No, oh, okay. I do. We just have a gun that I inherited from um, my the previous plastic surgeon. It's the Inverness system. You just call the company. The gun is like 18 bucks. And the great thing is it's not spring loaded. You just squeeze it. Oh, nice. So it's really, really nice because you can get it all lined up and then you just pour it a little pinch. I keep waiting for Ella. Ella, do you want to get your ears pierced? I'll pierce them for you. She does not. Oh. Yeah. Well. But yeah, and I pierce baby's ears too. It's really okay. fun. And then, does it come with the earring on it or they bring their own starter earrings? How does that work? We just keep cubic zirconia studs in okay. stock. So they don't get to pick. They're all just the regular CZ studs that go with the Iverness. And then there's like a little bottle of saline solution that comes with it too. Nice. So, yeah, I, yeah. Don't do it in my office. Just people haven't asked, but my older two, everybody had their ears pierced as a baby, but my older two have three piercings on each ear courtesy of me and I did a neighbor's kid the other day I was like just get the gun off Amazon and I'll do it but those are one-shot <laughs> deals yeah oh yeah <laughs> no, the Inverness is nice it was weird though we had two of them and I was gonna pierce somebody's ears a couple weeks ago and we couldn't find either of them like where did those go <laughs> that's my office we have like those little hand mirrors there's three exam rooms, two other rooms, there's eight mirrors, there's only five potential rooms, and you'll be in a room and there'll be none. And you're like, no mirror. Yep. There's three of them in one room or in a drawer somewhere, always. Yep. So, yeah, so that's, yeah, so I told people six weeks too, don't re pierce because we just fixed it all up. The other, um, you usually do this as an add on with a different procedure, or you can do it during a facelift, but is the aging earlobe. So, oh, yeah. Where the little, piercing little hole tough. Is, they get big, they get big yeah. and floppy. Yeah, and so that also is kind of easy to do so that it stays at, like the incision is kind of built into the earlobe and not coming off outside the edge of the ear. Yeah. Um, that is also very satisfying. It's really, I mean, it's something that if you notice it for yourself personally, it probably drives you crazy, but most people aren't like, oh my gosh, your earlobes are saggy you know but it is yeah. a thing. I feel like if more people paid attention to that I'd be doing a lot more earlobe tucks <laughs> right um I should start paying attention to the celebrities and try and figure out who has one right probably all of them I know they I mean no stone left unturned um so okay so earlobe tucks I think that's all I've got on the earlobe per se um I think, do you do otoplasty or? I don't, you know, we did literally not a single one when I was in residency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't do very many, but I did do a lot of ear cartilage grafting. Like we did, we didn't do, um, I did not personally do otoplasty very much because the summer was the time where the children's hospital did that. But I did a fair amount of microtia. Uh, mm -hmm. surgery, so rebuilding an ear for somebody who doesn't yeah. have one, which is way harder <laughs> when you're building an ear from rib. Um, and then we did a fair amount of stuff where we took cartilage from the ear for other types of reconstruction. So I felt pretty comfortable and then kind of decided on my technique for um, prominent ears. A good friend of mine's an ENT in the Navy and we used to, you know, compare notes and whatnot. So I like doing them. Um, and now I do them under local in the office. I just saw one of my patients back today. Yeah. And it, um, they're adults for the most part. I know that's just the demographic I see that it's really bothered them their whole time, their whole life. And they're, they want to get it done. So with most surgery, the hardest part is, um, the recovery, you know, taking it easy for two weeks. People mm -hmm. don't like to hear that. Um, and I have them wear a headband 
uh, after their initial dressing comes off and then um, have them wear that for at least two weeks around the, you know, around the Just clock. For support, yeah. Mm -hmm. While the swelling goes down, while the incisions stick around. Um, I can talk about that more if you want. <laughs> well, how about sleep? Do they have to avoid sleeping on their side? That seems um, I just have them try to sit upright on a couple of pillows early on. Otherwise, there is a lot of swelling and you can get, sorry, my dog just came out from under the bed. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm touching my dog right now. He's on me. <laughs> I'm sure she'll come over in a minute. So yeah, um, there's, so yeah, things to know postoperatively, there is sometimes a bit of swelling. Sometimes the face can get swollen, which is alarming if you don't wear, warn people. But mostly it's just uh, confined to the ear. The most concerning thing is um, having a fluid collection or blood collect in the ear. Right. Did you ever do any trauma to, uh, repairs for ear stuff? I'm sure. Yeah. You yeah. And I did some cauliflower ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, in some hematoma drainages. Yeah. So, all right. So I'll tell, before I just like um, hijack this otoplasty conversation. Oh, she took one of my slippers. Tell us what a cauliflower ear is. Damn it. So if you ever look at martial arts or wrestlers, they have ears that look kind of lumpy like cauliflower. And what's happened is they get abraded on the mats. They get a hematoma. The hematoma causes the cartilage to warp and deform and form extra cartilage and calcifications. And then it, it gets permanently deformed. Yeah, it's just all this extra calcified garbage in there, which yep. is why you don't want to leave a hematoma in there. So the problem with the wrestlers and the boxing guys is that they just ignore it, like not a big deal. Oh, yeah. Most people will come in and like, this happened, can you fix it? And you just drain off the fluid and you solve the problem. So um, with otoplasty, I see people 24 hours later because the most um, critical thing is to make sure that they don't have a fluid collection somewhere that needs to be drained because that can kind of mess up the whole recovery. Um, and if that goes okay, then then they're fine. So that's, yeah, and then I've taken care of some like dog bite injuries and other injuries to the ear where you're just putting stuff back together. Um, skin cancers can often end up on the ears because especially in men, they're exposed to the sun, um, the tops of the oh, ears. And then the chronic chondritis nodularis helicans, long name, but it's just, if you have a really prominent area of cartilage, it can get just irritated and tender and sore and excising that and shaving the cartilage down can help that resolve. What about, um, did you ever do excision of the little accessory cartilages that are sometimes here? Like once maybe. Yeah. I don't see. I don't those. know why that was when I was in the Navy, that was a common request. Huh. Like people would be like, my baby's otherwise perfect. This, this little thing needs to go. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> we would wait until they were at least five months of age so that they were safe for anesthesia. And then it literally is a very simple procedure, but oh, since yeah. baby it has to be under anesthetic. Um, yeah, those are all the little ear nuances. Um, when I look at someone with a prominent ear, you know this, even if you don't do ear surgery, but, um, I usually break the ear into three, three sections. So the people who have really stuck out ears, often it's a combination of the middle ear being that conchal bowl being just mm -hmm. big. So that's right. pushing the ear away. And then everybody usually has um, what we call an anti-helical rim. So you've got the rim and then you have a contrasting rim inside. And if it's not, if it's a face, then that also creates like you have a very nice room. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This one's a little mushed on this side, but it's always I know like mine that. are not perfect either when you start looking. They they stick up a little, but whatever. Well, actually it's funny when I met my husband, I had been like rotating on plastics a lot and talking about ear anatomy and I was like, he has perfect little ears. They're just perfect. <laughs> Those are perfect things you can't, can't correct if they're really small or if they're really large. I think you can do an ear reduction, but I don't know who does that. Um, yeah. but small ears, you can't make them bigger. I have a friend that's a plastic surgeon and he pointed it out himself. He says, I have like really weirdly small ears. And I was like, what? And then I was like, you're right. You do. But again, do his glasses slide around. No, they're just small for his head, which of course <laughs> there's like a 
size dimension, just like there's a standard for everything. But I was like, that's so odd and unnecessary. But um, so yeah, so if that anti-helical fold is gone, um, you can still be president of the United States. I like to point that out to people. I just have all kinds of traffic tonight. Um, uh, president, former President Obama has very Wait, prominent ears. Turn that down a little bit. Too. I know, but they look good on his head. Right. They're the right size. So he right. has that effacement of the anti-helical fold. So it's like there's no crease up there. And then a little no. bit of contral hypertrophy. And then the last, the last thing to look at is their earlobe. So some people will have uh, earlobe hypertrophy, i.e. It, it's large. It's usually not large. It's usually just sticking out. And it's most people don't notice or complain of that. It's just if you correct the rest of the ear and you don't address that now, all of a sudden you have this weird thing sticking out. Although I have to tell you, my best friend from high school, his earlobes were the size of a quarter, legit, just the size <laughs> of a quarter. He would hold one up and we'd all be like, oh, that's crazy. Well, there's <laughs> that whole, I can't quote it all, but it's the whole like, do you have a detached earlobe or does it go right yep. into your head? Yes, uh, yours is attached. Honestly, most of my time operating around the ears is doing facelifts. Mm -hmm. And I've moved from putting the incision right in the crease to just like a millimeter away. It actually fades better. Oh, really? That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, again, those are things nobody notices until it's not right. And so right. What like if, you see, if you see somebody's ears pulled down like this, it's called a pixie ear. And it just means there was too much tension on their facelift closure. Right. So, things we learn yeah so that is a telltale sign of yeah of um facelift that little pixie ear um yeah so that's otoplasty in a nutshell and then i usually do it under local like i said the incisions all through the back of the ear and heals pretty well nice then, yeah do you do any abrading or just the stitches no i've never so yeah the Mastardi sutures are the, you know, name for those sort of sutures. I've never abraded. There was a huge push to do that. So that means um, going in and scraping up the cartilage, right? right? And the idea is that if you scrape the cartilage, it will bend away from where you're scraping it. So you have to go in and then on the anterior yeah. surface of the ear, abrade the cartilage. And they have little Odo abraders. I believe yeah. there's an actual tool for it. But um, I never did it. And I did most adults while I was in the Navy and never had anybody recur. I think if the Mastardi sutures are in there, then they're in there. And yeah. again, my ENT colleagues didn't do it either. So I think it's a little bit dependent on where you train, whether they do that or not. Gotcha. So you just yeah. use what? Clear nylon and mm -hmm. or is that or a nylon for the Mastardis. I'll do uh, a contral resection if they need it. Mm -hmm. And then um, a Furnas suture. Everybody got something named after them. So to tack the uh, contral bulb back to the mastoid process, and that helps set the ear back. And then a little, um, kind of hard to describe, but another setback and excision on the back for the lobe. And not everybody right. needs all the elements, but um, they do need usually something, some component. Some people just need one of those three maneuvers. Um, Stella's asking what you can do for a cauliflower ear. I know she doesn't have one, but... Those are fine. You just... Hide some incisions in the creases, elevate the skin, and then you just get to reshape the cartilage. Shave it down, yeah, and then yeah. put it back down. Would you bolster that? I haven't done one of those in ages. I would. When I mm -hmm. used to do um, either skin cancer resections or I would take a cartilage graft for a nose reconstruction, I always just did zero form front and back with through and through stitches to hold mm -hmm. it on for a week. Yeah. Never had a human. Yeah, I think that especially for a cauliflower ear, because it's probably pretty inflammatory and it's going to ooze a lot. Having yeah. And we're talking about a bolster where you put like gauze or cotton essentially on there and then suture it in place so it's applying pressure. Because the ear is hard to splint. You can't put it in a little cast. Wyatt, what do you need? I am, I am on Instagram, dude. Okay, well, come sit. Oh, so no, I didn't know you had a cauliflower ear. But yes, a bolster is a definitely must have for that procedure yeah, yeah. oh i got a noodle i got a i got a seven-year-old who <laughs> needs a haircut oh, another guest appearance yeah the baby's upstairs sleeping oh 
been flying that airplane. And why it's been flying an airplane on my iPad all week. Out of the the four of us with COVID, he feels totally fine. He just tested positive. So <laughs> that's because of doing stuff. Can so when did stuff? you did you get COVID this last week then? Or Yeah, so we went to Disney last week and really early in the week I tested positive, but I felt pretty much fine until Friday and then I kind of crashed and burned for a while. So when we got home, we tested, Wyatt, stop it. The dog is going to bite your face off and I don't do face reconstruction. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we tested the kids. They all tested positive. So I took off the first part of this week and my very understanding patients got rescheduled, but I'm going to go back Friday because I'm feeling better and they'll go back Monday. Yeah, it's so been a week week vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's not really a vacation. <laughs> When you come back with COVID, how was Disney? It was amazing. We hit three parks in one day because we're insane. You we did well, so we got the VIP tour, which if you have not done this, we did thirteen this. rides. Thirteen rides? Are you sure it wasn't fourteen? I thought it was fourteen. I thought it was thirteen. Okay. Anyway, it's oh, a you must be thinking we went on the rock and roller coaster. Maybe. Maybe. So they just like take you around to each ride, and you get the lightning line each time, and then they like. Papia, they like just cut through this little gate in Magic Kingdom right off of Main Street. There's a parking lot back there. They throw you in their van. They've got car seats. Oh, nice. Drove us right over to, um, where did we go next? Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hit the rides there, had lunch. And then we went over to Hollywood Studios and hit the Star Wars rides. It was amazing. That's awesome. That's really fun. And for Legoland, remember that? Oh, yeah, we did the tour for Legoland, too. And they yeah. got to go on all the coasters, like, two times in a row. And I'm, like, popping more drama. Except for the Seesaw yeah. one that span. Yeah, the seat, there, there was a back and forth spinning one. We did not do that. Yes, because it was, like, I love those and it was going rides, up but and, I can only really do them a little bit, and then I start to get down. sick. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I might tap out. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> no, if it's like the, you know, like the little coasters at Legoland, fine. If we're talking like Thunder Mountain Railroad, okay. But Six Flags or Cedar Point, like I am not your girl. I don't want to be on that narrow track looking over 10 stories <laughs> and trying to panic. The whole time I'm just like praying. <laughs> That's how my sister is. I don't mind. We have fun, but my sister is less, less adventurous than you. She doesn't even like the Ferris wheel. She's like white knuckles, the whole thing. I don't like the Ferris wheel. <laughs> It's hot. It rocks. No, thank you. Yeah. Hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then Ella, my Ella, the first ride we do at Disney is Space Mountain because they're tall enough for the first time. Mm -hmm. And Ella's like, I want to sit in front. <laughs> it does. Right. I was like, are you insane? I hate being in front. I don't want to be in front. So <laughs> then in Legoland, they're like, Mom, sit in front with me. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Let's try to set a good example of not being terrified for my children. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we have a lot of adventure. We have, my kids were all like, as soon as they were tall enough, wanted to get on the ride. So it's pretty funny. Yeah, no, not my thing. And then, to calm down. And then the virtual rides, like the, um, there's an avatar ride where you like, you're riding the Banshee thing, but it's mm -hmm. all virtual on a screen. I just had to close my eyes. So and I then there's the dinosaur Jeep ride. Yeah. Where it like, where it goes around. Those and, like, I don't do well with. They're not scary. Places. Yeah, and I, then there was us. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. She can say it again. Those are all the ones I would have thrown up on, so I did not go on. And then the yeah. control. But they have immature vestibular systems, which is why they can do it. Yeah, my, I have an old, crusty, my, calcified vestibular system. My system is like, nope, it's not matching. Oh, They're not oh I do a somersault, and I feel like I'm going to throw up. <laughs> like, for le legit, somersault or, like, a back roll, like, I'm spinning, which I think is pretty common because when I Googled it, there are all these articles on how to cope with that if you're, like, doing martial arts. Really? Yeah. Why? Hold still, dude. That's yeah. So it's, like, a thing. That's even more sensitive than I am. That's crazy. It's a it's a skill. Why? You need to sit still. You're moving everything. Knock it off. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I got car sick every time we went to the grocery store when I was a kid. I don't think my parents ever realized because I never threw up, but I was miserable. I was definitely motion sick a lot, but not, I, I could do a somersault. I was capable of that. That's hilarious. Um, all right. Well, what are we going to talk about next week? I know I wrote down a bunch of topics. Then I don't know where I put it. 
gosh. Or not next week. Next week we're going to be in Arizona. Yeah, next week we're going to be in Tucson. My kids just found out today I was leaving. I was like, I need a vacation after our vacation. I mean, <laughs> I'm presenting at a medical conference. Yeah. Business trip. At a spa. <laughs> That's right. At a spa. So wait, can't do it in the spa. how much are those shoes? Are those shoes really $1,000 a pair? I think they're like $800, but they're custom made for your feet. I don't know. I, yeah, there's an orthopedic surgeon who created a line of shoes. You're unraveling your shirt, my friend. And I wondered, I was like, those look fun, but I don't know if I'm up for like $800 shoes because they'll be beautiful and then I'll never wear them. I'm like, right. they're it. supposed to be comfortable, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll have the opportunity oh, to scope. Well. I'll right. definitely go check them out, but. Maybe when we're um, hanging out in Arizona at the Women's Plastic Surgery Retreat, slash conference i've tried to get rid of the retreat word but that's okay um then uh we can plan our next uh talk but that would be talk. fun i think we'll or have time to catch up at the asps that was hectic yes yes yeah or dm either of us and let us know what you want to hear about yeah uh, or if you have more questions about ears <laughs> cool. and we'll get to it in a couple weeks that's right we'll have a good evening you too and i'll see you next week all right. Bye. Bye.